ひっくり返したら蓋をして最後にもう一度ひっくり返して焼けば完成ですソースをたっぷり塗ってマヨネーズをかけたら最後はこれでスーッとおーできた Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week, thanks to a sponsorship from Crunchyroll, we are taking a look at the Okonomiyaki from Sweetness and Lightning, a dish whose name literally translates to as you like. So you can really put pretty much whatever you want in there, but we're going to take a look at the more traditional fillings that you might find in this Japanese street food. We're going to start with the Okonomi sauce, a very simple sauce that starts with a tablespoon of white sugar, two tablespoons of oyster sauce, four tablespoons of ketchup, and three and one half tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I know I said it wrong, I'm just trying to trick. You. We're going to whisk everything together using an appropriately cute little whisk and pour it into a squeeze bottle for easier distribution down the line. Now, ideally, we want to score some actual Japanese mayo for this recipe, but we can make a close approximation at home using one cup of plain old mayo combined with one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar and a tablespoon of sugar. Viscosity is key here. We want a consistency a little bit runnier, just slightly, than regular mayo. You can see mine is a little bit too thin. I'm going to pay for that later on. And now for the non batter elements of our pancake, we're going to Roughly chop some pickled red ginger, a few scallions, and a whole half a head of cabbage. To do that, we're going to start by cutting the half in half, cut out the core, and slice into thin ribbons. Then cut those ribbons into bite sized pieces by cutting crosswise until you can imagine them fitting in your mouth. Make sure everything's chopped down to size, and now it's time to start making batter. Now, you can buy packaged okonomiyaki flour, but oop, oop. It seems to be generally frowned upon by okonomiyaki enthusiasts. So if you want to be legit, combine one cup of cake flour with a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. You'll see that I'm making some dashi broth. We'll use that in a minute. First, we've got to whisk together our dry ingredients, and then it's time to wrangle one of the strangest vegetables we've ever had on Binging with Babish, the Japanese mountain yam, which, when grated, turns into ectoplasmic goo. This apparently not only helps bind the pancakes together, but contributes to its signature flavor. If you can't find one of these, just use half a cup of milk with an extra teaspoon of Baking powder. We're adding the one cup of dashi broth to the dry ingredients along with the yam and whisking to combine. But just barely, just like any pancake, we don't want to over whisk. We want to prevent gluten development and allow the dry ingredients to fully hydrate in the fridge for 30 minutes. Then we are going to crack and lightly beat together four large eggs and add that to our fresh out the fridge batter yam mixture. Gently whisk the whole thing together until homogenous and then it's time to add our desired fillings, which can vary wildly, but we're going to go for a sort of traditional red pickled. Ginger, tenkasu or fried tempura scraps, maybe two scallions worth of our chopped scallions, save the rest for garnish, and of course our cabbage, which we're going to add maybe about half of to start. Get it nice and mixed in there, make sure it's all evenly coated, and add the remaining cabbage. We're looking for a ratio of cabbage to batter that looks sort of like coleslaw. That's right about where we want it. This is more of a pancakey cabbage than a cabbagey pancake. And now finally it's time to cook in a large nonstick pan. Heat two or three tablespoons of vegetable oil over medium flame until shimmering, and then dump in about half of our cabbage pancake batter. Use some rubber spatulas to coax it into the proper shape. You want this thing about an inch and a half thick and maybe eight inches around. Then it's time to layer the top with thin slices of pork belly. If you can't find this, you can use bacon. It's not as authentic, but are you going to tell me that bacon on this thing is going to taste bad? No, unless you're a liar. After covering and cooking over medium low heat for about five minutes, it's time to flip. You're probably going to want to use two spatulas to. Do this, but if you got a big old badass one like this, you just might be able to. Huh. Oh, that's a relief. We're going to cover this guy up and let him cook for another five minutes or until the bacon, or not bacon, pork belly is nice and crisp. Give it a little visual inspection and flip it out onto a waiting plate. And now it's time to sauce and garnish. We're going to start with the Okonomi sauce, brush a nice generous layer on top. You can't really have too much of this stuff, and then stripe it with our Japanese mayonnaise. And as you can see, like I mentioned before, I made mine too thin. You want the stripes to still hold their shape as you zigzag across and use a wooden skewer to make the deck. Decorative pattern on top. Since this one's a little screwed up, why don't we top this with the traditional accoutrement, starting with some bonito flake, which is really cool. You can see it waving around there from the heat. A gentle sprinkling of a n o r i which is a seaweed powder, and our sliced scallions. And there you have it, a pretty standard okonomiyaki. I'm really curious to try this thing because it's been filling my kitchen with crazy smells for the past couple hours. And I gotta say, really, really good. I'm not a huge bonito flake fan, but this thing is savory, saucy, crunchy, and a worthy member of the Clean Flake Club. But this time, why don't we? Try making.
making one just like they did in the show. Let's start with our okonomi sauce, and then let's give our store-bought Japanese mayo a shot. As you can see, it's not as thin. This is the consistency that you're going for if you're making it at home. Dry Gardel, and look at that, how pretty. And not to be a wimp about Bonito Flakes, but I think I'm gonna like this version a lot better. And what do you know, I was right. These things are great. They're easy to make, tasty, filling. They'd be most welcome at your next dinner party, hangover breakfast, or I don't know, baby gender reveal barbecue. Hey guys, I just want to say thanks to Crunchyroll for sponsoring this episode. If you haven't already, go to crunchyroll.com slash babish for a 30-day free trial. Unlimited anime, professionally subtitled and available on all your favorite devices. If there's one art form I can think of that truly loves food, it's anime. So give it a shot and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next from your favorite show.